Uh, today we are remembering the legacy of a comedic icon, Robin Williams. His loss came as a shock to the world and to many of us who grew up watching films like Mrs. Doubtfire, Dead Poets Society, or even Aladdin. He represented a happy part of our childhood. He spoke openly about struggling with depression throughout his brilliant career. It's hardly a secret today that many comedians have suffered from depression, and this is not the first suicide the industry has seen. Others who suffered the same fate include Freddie Prince and Richard Jenny, and the list goes on. Joining us in our studios to discuss this and more is stand-up comedian Nimir Abu Nassar. Welcome, Nimir. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Yumna. Jim Norton, who is a, uh, an American comedian, mm -hmm. wrote in Time magazine, mm -hmm. and I quote, The funniest people I know seem to be the ones surrounded by darkness, and that's probably why they're the funniest. The deeper the pit, the more humor you need to dig yourself out of it. Nice. Do you agree? Well, I know a lot of funny people, though, who aren't surrounded by darkness. I think it's a romantic way of looking at it because it's romantic to think that somebody could be so amazing and having to battle so many demons. We mm -hmm. like to pull for the underdog. Definitely in Robin Williams' case, it was the fact. But I wouldn't go in general. I'm not like that. I'm not going to go and play that card myself. Right, um, but... You know, but Robin Williams, for, for instance, was, was battling not only many demons, but... Um, stuff we probably don't even know about, but also, uh, you know, mental disorder, depression, as well as I heard just having been diagnosed with Parkinson's. So there was, must have been a lot weighing in on him and uh, divorces and, you know. Do you, but, you know, people have associated being funny with being happy. Yeah. And they don't necessarily That's not need that the same I thing. I agree with, yeah. So what mm -hmm. I want to know is you, for example, mm -hmm. you're a stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel pressure to keep this happy-go-lucky attitude? Say you're sitting on a table, yeah. and your friends are probably always going, Nimmer, make us laugh. Yeah. And say you're not feeling well when you're human at the end of the day. You go through ups and downs like all yeah. of us. So, Well, the nice thing is if you're surrounded by real friends, there's never that pressure because you're going to want to make them laugh. Look, the way it is is like if it's a nice pressure for people to want you to be positive. I think it would be a better world if everybody had that pressure. Mm -hmm. It's our profession, so therefore it follows. But um, like everything, you have your up days and your down days. And I guess how you handle it when you're not doing that well is really what defines okay, so you. Okay, so when you're not doing that well, how do you find the strength? You got to do it. I mean, it, it, imagine you're an engineer or an architect. Somebody wants you to design a building for them. You can't be like, well, the building's going to really be bad this time because I'm not in a good place. You still got to do what you have to do. But that's true. That's true. But this is more about using, do you ever have, feel like you can use the material yes. of something that's coming from you that may be not the most positive and then turn it into something positive. The thing is... Um, not I'm a lot of people can do that. It's true, but that's what we specialize in is really... It's kind of, the stage is our therapy. You know, Dane Cook um, is a great stand-up comic I'm very fond of and uh, he recently released a special that's very difficult to watch, which is very dark because his parents passed away and he had a lot mm -hmm. of betrayal in his family and he just went onto stage to talk about it. The, the way it is is... I think Chris Rock was the one who said it, is that if you talk about something and you make people laugh, it becomes your thing. So just by doing that, mm -hmm. you've now removed whatever was hurting you and you've now owned it. So it's a very powerful thing, but to be able to do that is difficult because you need strength of character. You need to be aware. It, sobriety actually helps. So if you turn to drugs or drinking to get through these times, it'll send you into downward spiral. If you don't and you experience it, you'll actually get stronger with every experience. Right. Now, you're somebody who is constantly being praised for being very positive and yeah, always is good. getting ready to, you know, you have a radio show, you try to spread it. But what I want to know is, isn't there, you, and you said you use it as therapy, mm -hmm. but what I want to know is Lebanon mm -hmm. is a place where there's a lot of negativity. Oh, yeah. Go it's on. in the news every day. All I know that. You know that. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Do you ever, and people go through hard times here, do you ever feel like it is part of your duty mm -hmm. to also use what it, mm -hmm. there is here to give people this kind of therapy? Yeah. Does that ever help? That's why, I mean, a lot of people come to my shows and they'll say things uh, like, I had such a good time, you made me feel so good about so many things, uh, and they'll usually name specific instances, and, I find, and I'm very happy when I can get that reaction. It is my job. That's what, I'm an entertainer. I'm, my job is to create a world so that you can come into my world and when you go back to your world, you see it differently. So I can take the bridge in the middle of the highway and make it a laughing point. So instead of people getting angry every time they get stuck in traffic, they remember my joke and they laugh, you've already made an, a difference and an impact. I think a job for a comedian, I think the saddest thing is that a comedian is expected to do things to make people happy, 
but people forget that they need to be happy themselves and sometimes they forget to look back at them. Which is what? What happened, for instance, in the case of Robin, Williams. Robin Williams. David Letterman, when he gave a very moving goodbye. Tribute to Tribute Robin ended Williams. by saying, I had no idea he was going through a hard time. I think a lot of people didn't think that because he had such a brilliant career. He, he had went a brilliant career and a great exoskeleton because usually you don't want, we're not attention horny. We don't want you to know, we don't want to talk about the negativity. We want just to surround by positivity so that hopefully um, it'll kind of just spread within us as well. We're seeing pictures of Robin Williams here provided by Mashable Online. What, what did he mean to you? I, I remember uh, talking to you uh, the day after he was <coughs> gone, it was announced, and mm -hmm. you said you were upset, not just by the fact that he was gone, mm -hmm. by, by, by how, how he was he went. gone. That was the tragic part. I mean, had he died of old age, you would have been sad at the loss. But the fact that he died by taking his own life, by hanging himself after trying to slit his own wrist and doing it in a home where his wife was actually there and, in the, and they didn't realize, it's just so tragic and sad because Robin Williams is childhood. I mean, he's our childhood. Yeah, that's, what, that's, that's, that's what I said. What he's do you, what do you, what do you remember? You know what what do you remember he's, of Robin he's, Williams? He's Patch Adams. He's Awakenings. He's, he's so cerebrally vast. He's done so much. Mork and Mindy. What was your favorite Robin and Williams movie? Is there one? I, at every point in my life, it changed. It was Aladdin when I was younger. Right. Uh, a lot it, of people. I had a. I had my one of my best friends from France. She didn't even know he, that he was the voice of what? Genie. What? No. She did not know he was the voice of Genie. He was the movie. And uh, and he was the movie. He was the movie. That's when. Can it, you it, imagine Ro No Robin Williams? His improvisational skills, his ability to be so cerebrally vast that he can say and come up with anything and be that uninhibited that they he could flow that like that. They said during Mork and Mindy, what I was reading is that he'd come up with so many of their lines, mm -hmm. they, they started leaving blanks in the script. Yeah. And that's, that's the genius Mork of and Mindy him. was actually one of the shows that paved the way for improvisational sit, sit, situational comedy, sitcoms, where they started leaving lines in the script. Because mm -hmm. of his, it was, he was really a pioneer in so many ways mm -hmm. for what he did. And Mork and Mindy, I think, was the first, you know, I, even he once in an interview said that there would be times where they'd run out of reel. And the, uh, and because they're filming on film, you know, and they'd have to change reels and do all of that because it would just go on and on and on. And then the editors would sit down and have to cut it in. He was, he was a genius in so many ways, mm -hmm. and I think, as in all stories, people always realize it a little bit too, too late. late. But in his case, we did know he was a genius. They did, but then you, but you go through all the movies yeah, again. When, when you're right, when, when he's gone. I mean, the day he, he died, that day, um, it was just it was un unsettling. I, I got in the, and it, it shows you his strength when I get all these WhatsApp messages from people, or messages, or phone calls from people who just want to talk to me to tell me, did you hear Robin Williams is dead? Because we have no idea how to process this information. They're like, maybe the comic could shed some light. But I have no idea what to bring, make of it either, except that it's so sad. Speaking of the comic, last month, you had your biggest show ever yeah. here in Lebanon. Yeah. A sold out event with 4,000 people. Yeah. Congratulations on Thank that. You. It was titled Uninterrupted Funny Observations. Yeah. You've also just, just wrapped up your Middle Eastern tour. Mm -hmm. You that saw you go to Jordan Actually, and Qatar and and Jordan, Qatar and Abu Dhabi and there's still more countries I haven't wrapped it up yet. We're still moving on. You travel to the United States tomorrow. I don't yeah. know if our audience is actually aware of that. Yeah. And you embark <laughs> upon a whole new set of uh, challenges Adventures. there. So, you've accomplished a lot for somebody who's actually been here for a while. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to tackle the United States and using their culture in comedy as a as a middle as probably <coughs> a Middle Eastern comedian who's moving there? Just get into the porn industry really. <laughs> do you have any any alternative? I love I any love making you uneasy. Any, any alternative I love making to you that? Uneasy. Any alternative? Listen. Just in case that doesn't work out. Oh, okay, do yes. Do you have a backup? Do I have a backup? No, damn it. Um look, the thing is I I grew up in the US, but I, I made my career and I made my living and I, I made my legacy here so up until this point. And this might come as a surprise to people, but if you make it in Lebanon and subsequently the Middle East, the rest kind of becomes easy. The, the amount of difficulties, the, har the hurdles that you face here, none of that's existent over there. Over there you have competition. Over here you have So how do you plan to everything. tackle how do you plan to tackle the competition? You have a competition, mm -hmm. you're going to Los Angeles. Yeah. It's a lot of stand-up comedians yes. there, a lot of people trying yes. to make it, a lot of... None, of, none as hairy as I am. No, true, but a lot of Middle Easterns tried to make it before, and yeah. not everybody has been able to succeed. True. So as you embark upon this new journey, how, what is your plan? Except well, none of, none of the Arabs either made it here either, so I have that going for me. The right. way I intend to do it is like any other comic should do it. 
hard work and hustle. I mean, that's how I've made my, my career here. It wasn't luck, it wasn't money. It's always been working really, really hard and accepting your craft as being a discipline that you need to work on actively. So when I go to the US, it's not going to be any different. It's just, my target isn't Arabs. My target is Americans. And the reason that is, is because I believe it's time that we exported our culture to the US properly. I mean, the only time we appear in media or we do anything over there, it's always about war and killing. We want to let them know, you know, it's not really about them, it's just about bringing the world closer together. We're on social networks all the time through Twitter and Facebook and everybody's pretty much the same. So why haven't we really exported anything over there yet? I think it's high time. So I'm looking forward to that. You're looking forward to that. Do you plan to come back every now and then? And yeah, definitely. I would never leave here. This is, this is my base. Do you know what I'm saying? I travel most of the time, all the time anyways. I'm always going back and forth. I have my home here, my family's here. My sister's gonna be coming with me to the US, so we're gonna be teaming, because let's face it, if it wasn't for her here, I wouldn't have done half of what I did. Same thing's gonna happen in the US. She's one of my biggest uh, forms of ammunition. So for me, it's just like, you go to the US, you do a concerted effort over there, and you keep going between the two different places. It's a day's trip. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to the adventure. All right, well, we wish you the best of luck, and you're gonna have to come back here and tell us about your adventures in the new world. I, w I will, for right? sure. Right. Even if they're in porn? So <laughs> Linda, I'm going to end this and turn it back to you. That was Nimr, a comedian talking about the legacy of Robin Williams and his big move to the United States. Back to you, Linda.